So I'm going to do my best in the short time we're together to do whatever I can to help make you, help you, give you some distinctions, some ideas, to get your thoughts, get your ideas across the first time. How many people would like that? Yes? And also be able to build your business a little bit faster. How many would like to do that? Yes? Very good. So that's, that's what I'm all about. Um, before I begin, though, how many of you noticed that Zach and I both ask a lot of questions? Okay, when you first heard him doing it, how many people were sick of it, got sick of the questions? How many, got, how many got sick of raising your hand? All right, good. So the reason we do that, the reason I do that, is not to make you feel like a four-year-old or anything like that. That's not the point. We're going to be talking a little bit about this word right here. What's the word? And one thing I know, if you get nothing else from this, So what's going to happen is I'm going to put some energy into this. Hopefully you put some energy back. Look, if I stood up here and I said, <clears throat> okay, for the next hour or so, I'm going to talk about sales. The most exciting thing you can think about. I got about 50 PowerPoint slides with 30 bullet points on each one. And I'm going to go, with, how many have ever been to a presentation like that? Okay, good. So, so yeah, so I'm not going to do that. One thing that I've learned when it comes to selling Two people come together. And the reason I ask the questions is to ask some what? Get some what? Get some what? Because two people come together in a selling situation, person with highest energy usually wins. How many know what I'm talking about? Yes? How many of you have kids? If their energy is higher than yours, who wins? Am I right? If you don't have that experience, I'll loan you my, uh, my 8-year-old and my 15-year-old. I mean, they'll wear you out. But the idea here is this, is in, and Zach referred to it, he says, you know, you, people get fired up, they get out there, they go out there to build the business, and they hit their first no, and what they lose is their what? Energy. So part of it is energy management, being able to maintain yours and others. How many people would like to know how to do that? Okay, good. So that's what we're going to do. It's the reason I ask questions. I'm going to be asking you to get involved to keep your energy going. Deal? Everybody willing to participate? Yes? All right, good. We'll see. We'll see. Um, the other thing is this, is that, like I said, in, in tough economic times, the reason I like them is because the people that don't know how to run businesses get wiped out. I mean, not that I want them to get wiped out. I'm, it, it, my point is, is the people that know what they're doing do extremely well because there's more market share for them. Does that make sense? So when, when Zach is saying, he goes... He says, you know, people sit around, they talk about their health, they talk about their hip, they talk about their last doctor visit. People talk about health, and they talk about money. Yes? yes? And of course, being in the right place at the right time with the right products, now the only, the only variable is to make sure, as he said, you have the right you there. Yes? yes. How many have ever seen a great opportunity? How many people saw somebody else take advantage of it and you didn't? How many got a little upset about that? Okay, good. You should. I mean, Roger said it yesterday when you, you, you were talking about, I think it was your father that said, I could have bought those, bought that property at a, at a certain amount. Don't ever let that happen to you. So what I'm going to tell you is this. This is a window. This is a what? It's a window of opportunity where some people are going to get very, very wealthy. And I'm not just talking about financial wealth. I'm talking about emotional wealth, physical wealth, spiritual wealth. How many people would like some of that for yourself? Because at that point, where I learned what it, what, what it took to really build a business. I knew how to sell. I mean, number one is you got to know, the number one skill is you got, as I said, is you got to know how to what? Because sales equals income. Sales equals what? Income. Say it like you mean it. Sales equals what? Income. Sales equals income. Any business I've ever worked with that ever had a cash flow problem, uh, profitability issues, market exposure issues, usually somewhere, someplace in the organization, in a key place, somebody doesn't like to or doesn't know how to what? Sell. And by the way, selling is not just selling a product. I mean, it's how many of you realize um, getting your bookkeeper, getting your accountant, getting your attorney to be on board with you, that also takes an enrolling process, yes? You see? So sales... Um, how many of you know people that have great ideas but make no money with them? See, in my experience, is, unfortunately, 
I read Small Business Administration said in April of 2008 that, th that over 82%, what percent? 82% of most businesses would fail within four years. Now, that was before the credit crunch. And my experience is not so much they don't have a good product, they don't know how to what? Sell it. Number two is you also have to know how to build a great what? Team. And if you're going to build a team, you've got to be able to recruit. And recruit is the same as what? Sell. Here's the problem, however. If I said to you, let's do a little free word association here for a second, okay? You know what that is? In other words, if I said the word Christmas, what words would you say? What else? Toys. Happy. Credit cards. Whatever. Okay, whatever. All right. So I'm going to give you a word. I just want you to shout out the words that immediately come to your brain when I say this word. Ready? Here it goes. Salesman. Did you hear what? Did you hear what? Come on, you guys, say something. What came up? Yeah, yeah. Because what I heard in the very beginning is pushy, sleazy, right? Some people say rich. That's good. Second thought. But the problem is, is if you can't, if you can't, if if you have this vision of a pushy, sleazy salesperson, you'll do everything to avoid it. And what's the easiest way to avoid that image? Yeah, don't sell. Convince yourself, I'm not a salesperson. I can't do this. I'm not into that. Everybody understand, yes? Hello? Okay, good. The third thing that I learned also is it's critical to know how to what? How to what? Preach. Teach. Not preach, teach. <laughs> What's the word? Teach. teach other people on your what? Teach. How to? Sell. Let me just say something about that right now. How many of you would like to build a, a great business in this business. The, the, the holy grail, the secret to the, in my experience in working with network marketing businesses over the last 10, 15 years, is if you can learn how to what? Other people on your? How to? You'll build depth beyond your wildest dreams. Everybody understand, yes? The problem is that for some of you, you're pretty good at selling, but you're not good at transferring or replicating it to somebody else. Does that make sense? So the idea is, is to learn how to teach. And teach, by the way, is not just show and tell. I'm going to give you some examples of teaching. How many would like to know how to do that? So you can take some of these things back to your teams and get them to do a little bit better. Yes? yes. It's not show and tell. It's not just standing up there and saying, this is what I did, this is what I did, just do what I did. I mean, that's helpful. But that's, you know, in the cone of learning, that's about 20% retention, which we'll get into a little bit later. The other thing about a business is that a business has good, has to have solid what? Solid what? Systems. This is the difference between a self-employed business and a, and a real business. The, the, the great thing about JD Premium is it gives you plenty of what? Marketing what? Marketing systems, okay? Selling systems. You got a flip chart system. Everybody understand, yes? Follow the what? Because the truth of it is where people fall down is they want to do it on their own. They want to do it their way. And they want to modify it a little bit to do it their way. How many know what I'm talking about? Just follow the what? How many people would be willing to do that? Turn to the person next to you and say, I will follow the system. Okay? The other thing about a business as I learned back then, is it requires, and by the way, most salespeople hate this word. <clears throat> What's the word? What's the word? Particularly in accountability to numbers. In accountability to numbers, you've got to know your numbers. In other words, how many phone calls do you make? How of those phone calls? How many contacts do you get through to? And how many contacts does it take to get an appointment to sit down and do a one-on-one? -on -one? And out of those appointments, how many are you going to close into the business? Everybody understand? Yes? yes. Hello, yes? yes? So if you figure you've got to do 100 calls, get through to 50 people. Of the 50 people, you're going to get 20 people that might be, might be interested that say they want to meet with you. Of the 20, probably 10 might and actually... Three or four of those will cancel, so you'll end up in, f in front of five people, and you're going to convert one. Everybody understand? Yes? Hello, yes? yes. Turn to somebody and say, that's great news. <laughs> Turn to somebody and say, it's great news. <laughs> Why is it great news? Why is it great news? 
because you know what it takes to get rich now. Everybody understand, yes? yes? You know what it takes to get rich now. It's not, a, it's not rocket science anymore. Everybody understand, yes? yes. See, you can, the truth about sales, you could be deaf, dumb, and blind and still make a lot of money if you are accountable to your what? Numbers. Look, how many of you in this room would like to be in better physical shape? Come on, everybody raise your hand. Okay, good. Now, how many of you realize that in order, the first thing you got to do in order to lose weight is do what? Stop eating? No. 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 You got to get on the scale. First step. Look, I, I'm not kidding you. You got to get on the scale. It's the same thing. You got to know your what? Numbers. You got to be able to calibrate what you're doing. Everybody understand? Yes? yes. When, I, when we were down three quarters of a million dollars, my wife and I, we got back to zero. Man, that was celebration. Pop, you know, pop the, the, the party. Everybody understand? Yes? yes. Hello? Yes. And so my point is you got to have an accountability to numbers. When we've worked with organizations that were, where teams have been willing to sit down and say, Here's what I did this week. Here are my numbers. Every single one of them. Now, by the way, 10% typically drop out because they don't want to be accountable. They don't want to do it that way. But my experience is those that do typically will drive their numbers, and you'll watch, you'll watch a sustained growth over an extended period of time. How many people would be willing to be accountable? Yes? yes. Okay, that's why that um, premium, mass, uh, premium mentor I keep mastery in my mind. Premium mastery, premium mentor university is so important to hold you accountable. How many of you would like to build great wealth extremely quickly? Okay, good. Now, by extremely quickly, I don't mean like overnight. How long does it take, by the way, to build a business? Yeah, about three to five years. Anybody that's telling you that you can do it faster than that is really not telling you the truth or they don't have a lot of experience in my experience. Does that make sense? So... The bottom line was, is that in order, to, in order to build your business, if you want to do this, my experience, this is the formula. Does this make sense? Hello, yes? yes. Okay, good. So here's what I'd like you to do. I'm going to give you about one minute. How long? One minute. One minute. What I'm going to ask you, but this is not a break. Don't go run into the toilet or anything like that. What I want you to do is I want you to discuss this. Discuss with the person sitting next to you where are you strong and where are you weak? What are the areas that you need, you need to work on specifically in order to build your business? Which of these areas do you think would make the biggest impact? Does that make sense? Yes. Got it? Okay, so one minute. Discuss with the person next to you. Ready? Go. How many need more work here? Show of hands. How about here? How about here? Here. You shouldn't need that. You got that. How about this? How about here? How many work on all of it? Okay, good. It's good. Me too. I mean, it's a never it's a never ending education. I mean, this is not this is not rocket science material. Everybody understand? Yes? yes. Sales equals income. What's the problem then? <laughs> Who said time? Who said time? Okay, hold that thought. Just hold on to that thought for a minute, okay? It's a good one because it's, it's a common one. But here's the problem. Everybody see it? Everybody go, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing, okay? This is your brain. This is not your brain on drugs or anything like that, but this is your brain. Now, what percentage of your brain do you consciously use? Anybody know? How much? What percent? Two? Ten. Okay, two. Two. <laughs> It'd be a rough day here. Okay. All right. So if that's, the, that's let's say, seven or eight percent that you consciously use, if this is the conscious part of your brain, what part of the brain is this? Unconscious? Is that what you said? <laughs> this is unconscious. No, it's called... Yeah, thank you. It's called the what? Subconscious. The reason we call it subconscious 
is it because we have lots of memories in there we don't think about all day long. For example, um, how many people in this room have ever been heartbroken at least one time in your life? Oh, come on. Some of you, get your hands up. Okay, good, thank you. How many of you have ever lost money at least once in your life? Oh, good, yeah. How many of you have ever loaned money to somebody who didn't pay you back? Okay, good. Oh, now we don't think about all those things, but they show up in other parts of your life. For example, let's say that, what's your name? Ron. Ron. Let's say Ron and I are working together, we're doing some training together, we're making calls together, we're doing, everything's working really well. We've maybe got some other businesses, we're in joint venturing. Everything's great with Ron and I. We've been working together for nine months. By the way, I'm making this up, okay? What I don't know about Ron is maybe five years before I met him, he loaned money to a friend that didn't pay him back and it really upset him. I, I don't know if that happened or not, but anyway. All I know is it's present time right now, and I go up to Ron and I say, um, Ron, you know, I'm a little short on cash. If you could loan me about 80, 90,000 bucks, I'd be happy to pay you back in a few months. Now, if he's been burnt before, what's he immediately thinking? And I want you to hear something. This is critical. Immediately, our relationship changes. How many know what I'm talking about? immediately our, all of a sudden he doesn't trust me as much, he doesn't want to hang around with me, and here's the point you guys got to get if you're going to be leaders. It has nothing to do with me. I could be totally trustworthy. Everybody understand, yes? yes. But it's because, I, because of my request, I triggered something out of his what? Subconscious came up in the form of what I call his what? Little voice. Everybody know the little voice I'm talking about? It's the one that just went, well, little voice, I don't have a little voice. That's the one I'm talking about. Mine sounds like my mother. I don't know what yours sounds like. How many of you have a little voice? How many people suspect you have more than one? <laughs> okay, good. And so my experience is what blows this whole thing out of the water, which was what Zach was alluding to, and some of you read the book, is that what stands in the way, and I don't care if what you're looking for is money, relationships, lifestyle, is that incessant chatter between your ears called your what? Little voice. How many know what I'm talking about? It's the one that, says, that walks out of here and says, we have, the, we have some of the best products on the planet. We have the best comp plan on the planet. I am so excited. But well, what are they going to think about me? Why you haven't made enough money in this business yet? What makes you think you know what you're talking about? Maybe you need a little more experience. Maybe you should learn a little bit more about the ingredients of every single one of the products before you talk to somebody about it. That'll help. Am I right? It's just your little voice playing games with you. Does this make sense? None of you guys, you don't need to be an expert on what's in the bottle. You're an expert on giving people their what? Dreams. That's the business that you're in. That's what this country needs. That's what the economy needs. Everybody understand, yes? yes. <laughs> How many people know the little voice I'm talking about here? See what I'm saying? And so what happens is, is it, what happens along the way here is you want to build a business, right? And what happens is you want to build a business, but your confidence level is low, blah, blah, blah. You, you're going to go out, you're going to make, get on the phone, you're going to make phone calls, right? I'm going, to, I'm going to go talk to some people, right? You've said it to yourself. Well, I'll, I'll, I'm going to do it tomorrow. 